man to the first man that is the tender age of just early 20s to win the critics choice award at the brits and he's preparing to support some of the most famous men in music the rolling stones he'll be at a rolling stones gig later in the summer before that he'll be at glastonbury and celebrating the release of his new album and tom joins us now very good morning to you. How's it going? It's going very well. We're going to talk to you in just a moment. But first, shall we hear some of the latest single? Now, this is the, the one which went straight to number 10 in the top 10 at the weekend. Let's have a listen. And, and Tom joins us now. Well, congratulations on um, getting to number 10. It, it's extraordinary that it is your first single because you've already, you're already an award winner. Yeah, no, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it was mad to win a, a Brit Award before kind of put an album out but it was it was so good to so many people sort of heard my music yeah, that. yeah. and so the album is out today this finally morning. today yeah it's it's kind of mad um kind of waking up and like it's there and I got given a cd and it's just yeah it's crazy mm. it's crazy it's real and a very busy summer for you because tell us about the rolling stones thing <laughs> you we wanted to get tickets and then you ended up yeah so I was, I was desperately trying to get tickets and I um I, I, I rang my manager up saying you know, is there any way you can sort of help me out? So I'm a big Stones fan, and um, and he was like, you know, I, I, can't, I don't know if I can help you. And then like two days later, he rang me up and said, okay, I've sorted you some tickets. Um, you're gonna have to play as well. So <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of mad. Now, d just explain that for for us. He did he already know that they had asked for you to be their support act? I don't know. I have to ask him. But it's it was you know it's such an honour, and. Um, you know, like it's just one of those bands that they're, they're like an, such an iconic rock band, and mm. and like to, to be asked. And funnily enough, I'm actually playing before Jake Bug as well, who um, I toured with in November. Who so it's going to be kind of weird because like that tour, but then the Stones come on afterwards. So yeah. is, is it one gig you're doing with the Stones, or is it? Uh, a, a it's just two? it's just, yeah, it's Hyde Park, and it's I, I think that um, it's like the anniversary that they did this like. Certain, certain amount of time ago, like 50 years ago, they mm. played that show. That's so a, no, for a young man, still mm. tender years, what, you're 20, 22? 22, 22, yeah. You know, doing a big gig like Hyde Park and Glastonbury, it's quite a tall order, isn't it? Yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really excited for Glastonbury um, next weekend. Like, it's always been a dream of mine to, to play it, and like two years ago, I watched it kind of all on television. Mm. Um, and, but I, you know, with Long Way Down, I really wanted to record an album that had that kind of live feel to it and I recorded it in a very live way so that when I did these gigs and when I toured people felt like it was the album on the stage mm. and they and they sort of so it, it wasn't a kind of like just a version of the album live it, it really was the album mm. what's the biggest you've played to we did a festival in Holland um, last weekend uh, at a festival called Pink Pop and that was like I think it was like 10,000 people and it was kind of I know because when you go from like doing thousand capacity to ten thousand it, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to yeah mm. when you go from a thousand to ten thousand it's just not another thousand just another thousand no yeah and then the Rolling Stones is like 60 so <laughs> it's really really quite terrifying and have you met the Rolling Stones before have you no met? no I've never never met them no do you get to meet them when you support them or do you do you know if you're kept sort of separate do you know how they are when you I don't you know, know but I've heard that um, Ronnie Wood has like a, a, a bar backstage that they tour like a pub he tours this okay. pub. Uh, that might not be true, it might just be a rumour. But um, I'm sure there are all sorts of stories and yeah. rumours about them that you'll find out yeah, yeah, whether yeah, they're yeah. true or not. And if yeah. you get invited in, maybe just one or two drinks before you go on and then have the rest afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Stay in the right frame of mind. Yeah. In order to um, sort of gear up for that kind of experience, what what do you do? Do you change anything? Do you have any habits or um, I'm just you know, to be honest with you, I'm still sort of getting used to playing live in front of big audiences, but um, I do this thing with, with my band who I play with, we just kind of warm up and try not to think about it too much, try and get in that kind of headspace. But I, you know, with, with live, I really try and, you know, the album's, I guess, qu quite personal, and I really try and go back to that space of when I kind of wrote the songs with the album. Mm. Um, I was going to say, it's, it's, um, you've clearly got a very big fan base and a lot of people love your music, but it does, it's divided opinion, hasn't it, in the sense that um, one or two reviews have been fine and one or two reviews have been really rather unkind. How do you deal with that as a young man who's, you know, clearly everybody feels criticism sharply. How, how does it bother you? You know what, I, I, I kind of, a few months ago I read um, a review of, of a live gig and I sort of read it and it really, really got to me. Um, because, you know, you, 
it's particularly on your, you know, when you're starting out, you, you take what people say as kind of, you know, the, the written word, and it, it seems very definitive. But I, I learned from that experience a few months ago not to not to read what people to have to say because everyone has an opinion, and it's one man's opinion against you know a thousand others. And yeah. why listen to theirs more? So I, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I don't really read reviews, I, and I try not to get involved. But what, what's amazing is is for me is the most important thing is when you when you do a show, and and people come up to you at the end and you know and they tell you how much the you know the music means to them, and it just feels. Yeah, you know, and I guess it's important to not listen to the, the good reviews just as just as much as you don't read the bad reviews. I think it was Alfred Molina, wasn't it, who said that uh, he doesn't read uh, either because if you're going to take notice yeah. of the good reviews, then you have to take notice yeah. of any negative reviews as well. Yes, yeah, it's, it's funny actually. I, I was I was in a I was in a restaurant uh, a, a month or so ago, and um, Chris Martin happened to be in the restaurant, and he came over and said hello. And it's so char one, one of the most charming people I've ever met, and that's the thing he said to me. He said, don't read the good ones, mm. don't read the bad ones. Best tell your dad not to read the bad ones, too, <laughs> after you got in touch yeah. with the enemy about yours, too. I know that Coldplay love your music, don't, don't they? So presumably some sort of collaboration or tour or support or something yeah, should Yeah, be... I'm, I'm a huge fan of theirs, so, yeah, it's a real honour, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. good to see you, Tom. Thanks cool. so Thanks much. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Uh, Tom's single, Another Love, and his album, Long Way Down, are both out now. Now, in a couple of minutes, we'll speak to Andrea Begley, the winner of BBC One's The Voice. First, so here's a quick last look at what's happening where you are. See you in a moment. <laughs>